I'm sorry, Lexi, for that. I know I'm kind of like breaking your heart. I finished the house in the Cerulean Sea. I have thoughts and opinions. So thrilling, exciting, mysterious, and holy crap, so creepy. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I am so excited because in this video I will be reading all of Alexandra Roslin's favorite books. Lexi, oh my god, she is one of my favorite booktubers and it is so amazing because I've gotten to know her so much over the past couple of weeks. It was so funny. I started watching her channel and then I saw that she commented on one of my videos like, oh my gosh, you are a ray of sunshine and I was like, back at you girl <laughs> lexi and i are slowly becoming really really great friends and we are both reading each other's favorite books right now which is so exciting <laughs> Okay, we flex in, yes. <laughs> so as you just heard, <laughs> I've been able to practice my Spanish a bit more. And that is all my friends, because I've been following these Spanish classes on Skillshare. If you didn't know already, Skillshare is an online learning community, an online surface, and you can like follow all of these classes on various different topics. And their classes range from beginner to professional level, but they have thousands of different classes that you can choose from. And I'm sure that you will definitely find something in there that you would like to explore yourself as well. So for instance, you have lots of classes about productivity and concentration. I mean, I know that we're going into summer and you don't really want to think about school, but some handy dandy tricks about subjects like these are always welcome because we constantly get distracted by our phones or by our surroundings. But you can also learn how to edit videos on Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the software that I use for my videos. And let me tell you, it's complicated as f and if I had Skillshare before I started using the program, I think it would have been so much easier and I would not have made as many mistakes as I have. <laughs> and I'm so glad that Skillshare is offering a special deal to my subscribers, to you guys. So the first 1,000 people that will click on the link in my description box down below will receive a free Skillshare premium trial. I really hope that you will take this opportunity since they offer so many amazing classes. But right now we will go on and see if I enjoyed any of Lexi's favorite books? Maybe? Maybe not? <laughs> Okay, so these are the three books that I have on my TBR for this video. The first one that I really, really want to pick up today because I'm so excited for it is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This one is so hyped. Oh my god. I have never heard a negative review of this book. So that always makes me feel really scared. Like, what if I don't like it as much as everyone else and then everyone will hate me? Honey? You've got a big storm coming. I have literally no clue what this is about. Okay, I've had heard like a couple of things, but I don't know if it's a book that you need to know much about before going in or if you should just go in blindly. I will tell you what this one is about based on the synopsis. A magical island, a dangerous task, a burning secret. Linus Baker is a by the book caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. At 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records for company, but his quiet life is about to change. Linus is summoned by extremely upper management and given a curious and highly classified assignment, travel to an orphanage on a distant island and determine whether six dangerous magical children are so dangerous, in fact, that they're likely to bring about the end of days. When Linus arrives at the strangest of islands, he's greeted by a series of mysterious figures, the most mysterious of which is Arthur Parnassus. Parnassus? The master of the orphanage. As Linus and Arthur grow closer, Linus discovers the master would do anything to keep the children safe, even if it means the world has to burn. Or worse, his secret comes to light. So I am super curious. I feel like this is gonna be a little bit fantasy-ish and I'm feeling like I'm in the mood for a fantasy right now. I'm just super excited. Everyone is hyped up about it. So let's hope I'm gonna love it. One eternity later. Hello, people. <laughs> it's been a couple of days and I've read a little bit of the house in this really interesting. I can't speak. <laughs> what I wanted to say is I've read a bit in The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I am halfway through this book. I am on page 199 and I'm liking it. Yes, I am. But I'm not as obsessed or loving it as much as everyone else is. This is, I feel like, a very particular kind of story that will either be your absolute favorite thing in the world or it won't be. 
Well, I'm kind of in the middle right now. Until so far, I'd give it a three out of five stars, but we still have half the book to go, so lots of things can change. The beginning of this book and still like the rest of it as well, it feels as if I am watching a Pixar movie in my head. Like I can imagine the island. I can kind of like imagine the whole setting and it just feels like a very fun story, but also very sad. It has some super sad elements in it. Pretty much the whole society in this book looks down upon magical beings, magical humans, and you can definitely see that oppression in this book as well. So there are definitely like how do you call that? Similarities? And I don't know the right word or how to phrase it, but like in our world regarding like racism or oppression of LGBTQ people. And it has amazing messages regarding that, but it is very slow. And the writing style is definitely something that will kind of be like hit or miss with you. And for me, the story is moving along a little too slow, but it does make you feel connected to the characters. For me personally, it's just a little bit too slow. Hence why I'm not like in love with it, but I can see why people are obsessed with this story. My favorite character of the story until so far is definitely Chauncey, and also the audiobook is really amazing, and the narrator does all of these different voices for the different characters. So I'm gonna read the other half, and then I will give you guys my opinion on this super popular book. I don't think, for me personally, it will live up to the hype. Um, I'm sorry. Lexi for that. I know I'm kind of like breaking your heart, but you also predicted it. You predicted that I would give this one a three out of five stars. So we shall see what I will think of it in the end. finished the house in the cerulean sea i have thoughts and opinions but let's share them with you also if i wear a short sleeved outfit you can see my new tattoo i got this one in april it's the little ladybug i call him kevin so hi youtube meet kevin <laughs> That's not what we're here to talk about. So I adored the second half way more than the first half. I won't really be giving any spoilers, but I will just very briefly kind of vaguely talk about the plot. There is very little of it. So I don't really think you can be spoiled for any of it. <laughs> On Goodreads, I gave it a three out of five stars, but if I would be a bit more exact, I would give it a three and a half. In the second half of this book, Linus goes with the children to the town. And in that little part of the story where they go to the town, they visit all the shops they want to go and eat ice cream you can see the prejudice of the people who live in the town towards these magical children and it's so heartbreaking to see especially in that second half you saw how much arthur and also linus love the children and that was heartwarming it felt so empowering the way that linus stood up against his like bosses it was it was fantastic. But that doesn't take away that I had a bit of like, not a difficult time to get through it, but the writing is just very slow and very descriptive. And if there's like no plot at all, for me, usually that means that I'm kind of like, okay, what's gonna happen next? So it didn't pull me in into the story. I wasn't extremely invested. And it also doesn't help that this book is so hyped and literally every single person that I've heard talk about this book gave it a five out of five stars. So that made me think like, it should be impossible to give this book lower than a five. But in the end, rating it a three, but you know my reasoning and thoughts behind it. So now I can continue on with the other two books. A book that we will be buddy reading for this video so we both haven't read this one but we're just very excited about it and that is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland everyone and their mama has been talking about this book as well again don't quote me on the genre but I think it involves like a mystery maybe a murder mystery but it definitely has like some horror elements in it and I rarely read those types of books but I'm super excited. Dark dangerous things happen around the Hollow Sisters ever since they disappeared as children only to reappear a month later with no memory of what had happened to them. Aunt eerie occurrences follow in their wake. When Gray the eldest goes missing again Iris and Vivi are left to figure out the mystery but they aren't the only ones looking for her. As they brush against the supernatural Iris realizes that the world that returned them 10 years ago might be calling them back, but just how much horror lies beneath the surface. 
missing sisters, other creatures, people looking for them, and just this stunning cover. They all really intrigue me. This one is also almost 300 pages long, but I'm just really excited to be sharing my thoughts and opinions with Lexi and all these books, but especially this one because we're both reading it for the first time so we can be like guessing what's gonna happen next and it's gonna be very exciting. Okay, so I am halfway through the buddy read that I'm doing together with Lexi. Let me grab the book. <laughs> I am currently on chapter 14, page 156 of House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. And it has been a while since a book has grabbed my attention as much as this one. Oh my god especially the first eight to nine chapters i was on the edge of my seat it's definitely creepy it is definitely creepy and if you cannot really handle descriptions of like bodies and just gross things and blood and stuff like that then you should not pick this book up but also quick little tip do not read chapter eight before you go to bed don't do it. It's kind of creepy, especially if you're alone. Your night of sleep might be a little restless. <laughs> but let me give you a little bit of like additional information. So the Hollow Sisters, after they disappeared, they came back a month later. They couldn't remember anything of it. And after that, they kind of got famous. The eldest sister, Grey, is like a supermodel right now. She even has her own fashion brand. The middle sister, she is like in a, I think, rock and roll band, like a rock band. She's also quite well known. And then we kind of like follow the story from the perspective of the youngest sister who is called Iris and she's trying to live like the most normal life that she can. Everyone is always extremely interested in them because when they returned their eye color changed also their hair color went from brown to like basically white. Everyone calls them witches and when you're around them strange things occur. I want to know what's going on with these sisters and where they went when they disappeared. So let me continue on with reading because I want to know what is going to happen to these characters. I am invested to say the least. I haven't given you an update on House of Hollow but I have finished it. But oh my god, did I love this book. Definitely a four and a half out of five stars to me. I was leaning more towards a five out of five stars at first, but the first half was just so thrilling, exciting, mysterious, and holy crap, so creepy. I was freaked out a couple of times throughout this book because the descriptions of moldiness or bodies and blood and gore was very descriptive and detailed and I was grossed out by it and I can handle quite a couple of things so if that kind of freaks you out or scares you or whatever, be aware of it. It felt satisfying to see it all unfold, but I just love that like mysterious aspect where you're trying to figure out how everything is going so much and that was mainly in the beginning. So the first half was like a five out of five stars for me until like one character came into the plot and that's where I think the second half kind of started off and I still really enjoyed it, don't get me wrong. But the first 150 pages are just so exciting. Definitely a perfect read if you're looking for an action-packed creepy story but also maybe for Halloween or for like fall I think that would be great as well and I really adore reading about these characters and my arm is getting numb. Woo! So I actually started reading the third and final book for this secret TBR reading Lexi's favorite books video. Summer of Salt. And what I'm noticing with all these books is that they are very magical. They have magical paranormal elements in it. I mean, House in the Cerulean Sea, magical children with magical abilities. This one has kind of like maybe Stranger Things vibes, if you can say it as well. I don't want to reveal anything more without like giving away spoilers. So that's all that I'm going to say about it. And in this one, I think we have like a family of witches. I've read 14 pages until so far and we follow two to sisters and one of them can float which is interesting to say the least but besides that nothing really has happened so i can't really tell you anything about it also the plot seems very vague on the island of by the sea you could always smell two things salt and magic magic has touched every woman in georgina furway's family no one on the island of by the sea would ever call the fernways what they really are but then again no one questions the weather moodier than a summer storm or the allegedly 300 year old bird who comes to 
roost on the island each year. But when By the Sea is rocked by an unthinkable act, what made the Farnway women special suddenly casts them into suspicion. Over the course of one summer, a season of storms of love of salt, Georgina will learn the truth about magic in all its many forms. Like I said, vague plot, but I'm intrigued. When I'm like halfway through the book, because this one is only 270 pages or something, I will let you know what I think of it and perhaps I can reveal a bit more about the plot. Mm, so I was editing this video and then I found out that I did not give you like a middle update can I call it that? Of Summer of Salt. I finished it a couple of days ago and let me just give you my brief thoughts on this book and then this vlog has come to an end. Especially the first half of this book feels so summery. Basically we follow these two sisters and they live with their mother on this super small island and they basically have never left it so it's their home it's all that they know and every single summer all these guests come to their island because there's this 300 year old bird and everyone goes bird spotting <laughs> is that what you call it english so they receive lots of tourists and it just feels super summery and homey the first 100 pages but then something bad happens and i don't really want to tell you what it is because spoilers but from that moment on the book gets a whole lot more dark also one of the sisters is kind of looking for her magic i already told you one of the other sisters is floating but before you turn 18 in this family you will kind of like hopefully receive your magical power and our main character georgina is really struggling with that and there are definitely some other very heavy topics that are being dealt with in this book and a big trigger warning for rape and like sexual assault stuff like that it was beautifully written i can definitely see why lexi loves this book so much but i kind of have the same problem which is a very big word with this one that it had with the house in this cerulean sea and that is that it's very slow and that there is very little plot but i did love the whole ambience of the island and basically the same goes for the house in the cerulean sea as well which also takes place on an island oh my god lexi what do you love about magical islands i guess that's your thing. <laughs> I can definitely see why so many people love this book, the whole setting, the writing style. It's just not something that fully clicks with my reading taste, but I still could really appreciate the story and how it was executed. So I think I also gave this one a three to a three and a half out of five stars. I am so happy with how this whole reading experience turned out. I do feel like in contrast to the first like reading booktubers favorite books which i did for noelle gallagher i feel like noelle and i maybe have really different reading tastes and i think that with lexi i feel like we have similar reading tastes but we do differ in some aspects i feel like lexi loves very lyrical writing and sometimes for me it's just kind of difficult to understand maybe that's also the disadvantage of english not being your native language i feel like sometimes i cannot appreciate the writing as much as a native speaker overall i think this was a great experience i love lexi i love her videos so much so now that i have like tasted a little bit of her bookish palette let's say it like that i feel like i can make a better estimation of okay lexi likes this book i think i will or won't like this as well lexi and i we were doing like a reading each other's favorite books video together so i will leave the link to lexi's video in my description i cannot wait to watch it i'm so curious to hear her thoughts on my favorite books and i feel like she can really analyze my reading taste super super well i feel like i'm a little bit more shitty at that but okay i just had a ton of fun with reading these books and definitely let me know in the comments down below who you want to see me read their favorite books from that's a very difficult sentence <laughs> but do that okay comment which booktuber do you want to see me read their favorite book? okay i'm gonna i'm gonna stop talking you know what i mean <laughs> if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below and hopefully i will see you guys in the next one bye